Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here is your host, Father Jay Friedel. And good morning to all of you here in the greater Joplin area. Uh, another Sunday is upon us, and so we are here talking about issues of faith as they affect us here in our hometown. One of the things that's been going on the last few weeks that I know is on everybody's hearts and minds is the reality of some of the violence that has occurred in our midst. And, and many times as people of faith, we're called upon to try to say, you know, people say, can you explain this to me? Good luck with that. Um, but, uh, you know, can you explain, you know, at least how do we respond? as people of faith or people of goodwill or people who are trying to make sense out of the reality of evil and suffering in their lives. And so uh, this morning my guest is going to be Aaron Brown who is the lead pastor at uh, St. Paul's United Methodist Church. And uh, it's, Aaron, it's always good to have you back it's and talking about back. conversation with you. Um, so we are going to be back uh, just in a moment after this Mercy Minute. Uh, we hope you'll stick around and join us for this conversation about um, responding to violence in our midst. Stay tuned. If you are a smoker, um, you need to do anything in your power to try to stop smoking because that's probably the biggest risk factor for lung cancer. Ways to help you have quit smoking um, are either using nicotine patches, nicotine gum, there are other medications that your doctor can prescribe to help you quit smoking such as uh, Wellbutrin or Chantix. Um, there are also smoking cessation programs. We don't know the long-term consequences of e-cigarettes right now, and because of that, they cannot be recommended as a substitute for regular um, cigarettes. At the end of the day, we would like you to be off of all nicotine products if possible. Welcome back. So this morning we're going to be talking about how do we respond uh, to the nature and to the um, phenomenon of violent actions in our lives and some of the things that surround us. Um, uh, we've obviously had some horrible events the last right. few weeks. Uh, you know, the situation in Orlando where somebody just opens fire on people and still trying to figure out and make sense of all that. People are looking at the mind of the shooter right. and trying to figure out what was going on in his mind, uh, what he was, what point he was trying to make, what he was trying to do. Mm -hmm. So, but even before we might talk about some of those things, how do, how do you, when you get asked, Aaron, as a, as a pastor, as somebody who talks to people all the time, how do you respond as a person of faith to the, to the reality of violence in our lives? You know, I, I guess I, I feel like I need to have full disclosure when I have those conversations to say in, in, uh, you know, in, in our history of faith, and by that I mean the Judeo-Christian history of mm -hmm. faith, when we look at our scriptures, there is a lot of violence yes, in there. Yes, there is. You know, and we look at uh, the stories of the Exodus um, and, and some of the things that, that uh, the writer said that God told the Israelite people to do to the, the cultures and the communities and the cities that they had conquered. Uh, we look at that today and think, oh my gosh, how, how is that even possible? There are acts of genocide uh, mm -hmm. in our spiritual history that I oh, think yeah. we've got to come clean about and say, yeah, that, that's there. And, and it's that's truly in, a part of our background. In, in our scripture and uh, in our history. You know, yeah. It's not just something that was written down to tell a story. It, it's a part of our history. Well, I look at the Psalms. Uh, you know, the Psalms are, are probably the most, you know, mm -hmm soul-wrenching parts raw of, stuff. of, of yeah. the Bible, yeah. okay? And in those Psalms, I mean, there are all kinds of things. Now, we've edited, I love it, because you know, we use our Psalms for our daily prayer, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, several times a day and all those things. But I always love, because you know, we've edited out you know, a lot of those violent parts because they don't have the same You mean you don't context. use them, you haven't we edited them out of the Bible. No, we didn't edit them out of the Bible, but we don't, don't, we don't use, use them, them when your, we're doing them in right. the prayers. You know, so the last verse, what is it, Psalm, was it 137 or whatever, you know, let, you know, um, let, you know, let us, the, the, let, we will bash the heads of their, of their children against yeah. the rocks, so they have yeah. our enemies against the rocks. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, when people look at that and they'll go, that's in, that's in the Bible, and I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, it's in there. Yeah. And I yeah. and I and I think it's I think it's good that we you know realize that 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 does sometimes come from our background. Now I'm going to argue against uh, those people who want to shut down all religion because they say, well, all religion is by nature violent, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to go there because yeah. I really do believe that we've been pushed beyond that. But I think that whenever yeah. we go to our 
our gut feelings when somebody has attacked us what is our gut feeling is we want to attack them back. But you know, I think that sometimes what religion actually does for me at least is push me beyond that. Beyond it push me to make feelings, it, those yeah. gut feelings. I'm not I can't just respond just to that impulse right. to want to hurt back. Right. You know, I, I'll take the instructions of, you know, Jesus to heart that says, you know, you know, I want you, you know, you've mm -hmm. heard it said, you know, an eye for an eye mm -hmm. and a tooth for a tooth, but what I say to you is Love your enemy, pray for your persecutor, do those things. So I mean, yeah, I, it's a part of a history, it's a part mm -hmm. of life, but religion does that for me. And I know as people of faith, I think that one of the things that, that when we, we are confronted with violence is to say to people, we can't give in to responding in yeah. kind. And I don't think that's God's desire, even in light of the violence of the Old Testament. Um, because what we see, even in like the story of, of Noah and the ark, the 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 premise behind the flood was that God looked at humanity and it was so violent that God regretted creating humanity. And, but it was because it was so violent and people had turned on each other. And so I think that tells us a little bit there, maybe gives us a little glimpse at the heart of God. So that, that God's desire is not that we, that we battle one another and fight one another and destroy one another, even though we have some of those battles in our history. And again, let's face it, I mean, our scriptures are sometimes our reflection, unless we take the, you know, the, the, you know, the position that God was just whispering in the writer's mm -hmm. ear and just writing things down. But even at the end of that story, where God seems to be the one that wipes it all away, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even God then is seen as saying, I'm not, not going to do, do that, that again. again. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I mean, you know, now I, I'm not going to, this might be challenging to say this in some way for some of our listeners or, or, or different types of interpreters mm -hmm. of those scriptures. But, you know, uh, I always challenge my, my, my listeners, does that mean God learned something? If God is all-knowing, how can God learn something? But that's a little too yeah, philosophical for Yeah, I think you're putting Sunday your morning. thoughts on God right yeah, there, right. Well, yeah. I'm just saying, what do the uh, words mean? You know, because yeah. God did. I mean, because if we do that and we look what's in there, mm -hmm. God does look like he's yeah. a pretty violent God in some places well, in the scriptures. But, but I, I think uh, it's easy for those scriptures to jump out at us. You know, when mm -hmm. God tells the Israelites to wipe out the inhabitants of Jericho completely, men, women, children, animals, um, and and uh, we there are those passages they jump out at us but if you look at the the whole of of the Old Testament even there God is a God of mercy slow to anger abounding in steadfast love he, that message hits way more many times and I, I think the percentage of of um, passages, verses in the Bible that are violent is maybe about 2% if you look at all of them. Sure. But, but they do just jump out in your face. But, but we can't deny the fact that they're there. They're there. They and, are and, clearly and, you there. Know, and again. But we also have passages in Scripture where, like in, in Psalm 20, I think it is, where uh, it says, don't put your trust in, in horses. Don't put your trust in chariots, you know, armament. Um, right. Put your trust in the Lord. You know, mm -hmm. that, that in that whole sense of battle and war, it, it's still don't trust in violence as the, the, the way to live. Well, and again, we try to make sense out of all this stuff in right. our lives when it occurs. And let's face it, the scriptures are written backwards. You know, they were written looking in the rear view right. mirror, I mean, you know, saying, okay, this is the what happened. The Old Testament happened. mostly, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, like, even our mm -hmm. Christian scriptures, mm -hmm. I mean, let's, they were written long after, I mean, the Gospels were written long after Jesus lived. Oh, 50, I 60, keep, 70 years. I so. keep telling my people, you know, nobody was walking around with, with, a, with a camera, yeah, yeah. you know, taping what Jesus did. That's not what the so Bible is. So we need is. to work on the time machine. You and yeah. I, time machine going back with the cameras. Well, that might be entertaining. Can we do but that? That might just, Can we? you know, that might absolutely just upend okay. the whole thing. All right, yeah. Because if I really, sometimes I really believe that if I could actually ask Jesus what he thought, I probably wouldn't be happy with the answer. <laughs> I mean, he That's wouldn't probably be happy with the It's a whole different discussion. Yeah. But this whole thing of violence, there's so many people today who, for example, who will read those passages mm -hmm. and they use it for justification, all right? Now, again, uh, you know, there's lots of discussion these days as to whether or not we should call some of these folks, you know, Islamist extremist. Okay. Well, there have been lots of Christian extremists, too. Mm -hmm. Look at Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. Okay. Catholics and Protestants trying to wipe each other out, you know, mm -hmm. uh, feeling justified. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there have been crazies right here, you know, in Kansas. Remember the shooting of the abortion doctors, mm -hmm. you know, by people who said, I feel justified because, mm -hmm. you know, right. God is, God wants me to wipe this right. out. And so sometimes people will read some of those passages and feel like they are justified right. in doing that because that's the part that they're going to focus on mm -hmm. and that's the part that they want to 
you know, it's again, try to justify what's going on in their own heads. Right, right. and uh, we always have to be careful with that. And, and Please, you know, God. I, I think that, uh, that it is a reaction. Do we want to be people of reaction or people that, that are people of action? You know, one of the things I pray every day is, is God, be the Lord over my actions and my reactions. Because mm -hmm. I, I know if I just lived a life of reacting, um, oh. I, I mean, it, it would be a violent life. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I, you know, I would, it would be instead of two steps forward, one step back, it would be one step forward, two steps back mm -hmm. most of the time if right. I were just going again yeah. without putting the whole picture together and trying to figure out how do I respond mm -hmm. to some of these things that happen, right. you know? How do, right. I, how do I do some of those things? Well, you mentioned, you know, how we, we uh, uh, maybe didn't mention this, maybe I just imagined it, but talking about the Old Testament, in, in my mind, we, we have to look at the Old Testament through the, the, the lens of the new. So if we're Christians. We, right. <laughs> okay, and, yeah. and, and as a follower of Jesus, I do that, I, I think so. You know, there are these instances of violence in the Old Testament, but, you know, as I believe Jesus was God in human form saying, you know, this is who I am. You have questions, you've wondered, you've written about me, but this is who I am. What did we see in him? And, uh, I mean, I think there are a couple instances where Jesus, you know, may have gotten a, a, a little, uh, well, one instance that I know that Jesus got violent and one where, you know, we kind of look at that and say it's strange. But what, he went into the temple and saw the money changers. And, and it, it was a situation where they're taking advantage of religious pilgrims, right? right. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, any kind of injustice like that, I think we get a glimpse that it, uh, it, it, it hurts the heart of God. And, and so Jesus turns over the tables of the money changers. Yep. And, and I think, is it the Gospel of John that says that he, he made a whip out of cords and he chased them out, you know? So a lot of times people use that to say, well, Jesus got violent, Jesus so got I violent. can too. Exactly. And, you know, I think, well, if you see money changers in the temple, then you can do what Jesus did. <laughs> uh, but, you know, to extrapolate from that is probably a little bit dangerous. But there's another scene too, right? Um, when it's in the Garden of Gethsemane, or right after, or right before the Lord's Supper and they go to the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus asks his disciples, do we have a sword? Anybody got a sword? We need to go buy one. Uh, yeah, and then the other version of the same story is, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by right. the sword. So it's just like, put it away. There are some, yeah. yeah, put it away because we can't go that route. So yeah. again, these different viewpoints to tell different stories, what are we to make of all of it? Which is right. why some people are very skeptical about scripture and people who follow scripture in the mm -hmm. first place. Most of us who use it and follow it try to figure out what's at the heart of it. So mm -hmm. I, I want to say this before we go to a, a break here in a minute. But, you know, even our, I would look at our Jewish and our Muslim uh, cousins, okay? And even our Jewish and our Muslim cousins, you know, uh, who would only use the Hebrew scriptures, that you know, w where some of these things that we've been quoting are coming from, even most of them that I would know would say, we gotta be really careful that we don't just suddenly become a, a group that can wipe out people when we want to, mm -hmm. thinking it's the will of God, et cetera. And again, we've had uh, our, our resident imam on, on several mm -hmm. times, who's reminded us that really Islam was intended to be a religion of peace. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with our neighbor, you know, with any group, somebody can take some of those things and twist them in ways that will, uh, you know, will kind of suit their own purposes. Uh, even one of my own my associates from India will talk about, you know, uh, you know, Hinduism being one of those things that got twisted by a lot of political purposes, and that sometimes you want to dump it and put it in the category of Hinduism when really it's more politics, and they're using religion as the wedge to drive right. into yeah, the middle of in those religion. things. Exactly, yeah. and it can happen to all of them. So uh, we've been talking this morning about responding to violence and how do we do that as people of faith. Uh, we're going to be back here in a minute, um, but this is Faith in Our Hometown. Stick around and join us for a little bit more after the break. You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN TV, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. Well, welcome back. Uh, I've been talking this morning with Aaron Brown uh, from over at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about the issue, how do we respond as uh, people of faith to violence? Let's mm -hmm. shift gears a little bit now, because we're going to talk about some of the roots of some of this and how people have used or twisted, by our reckoning, uh, you know, some of these things to justify their actions. What do, what do we deal uh, with the people, though, who are the victims of those things who come to us and say, how mm -hmm. can you explain this, mm -hmm. you know? Well, I think um, 
I don't know that people ask, how can you explain this? They, they tend to ask more specific questions. Uh, oh. Like, did God do this? Okay. Did God tell somebody to do this? Uh, or um, why did God not stop this? And, and uh, I think those are the specific okay, questions. Those are, well, now, that, now where that second one's getting more into the, I guess I get a lot of philosophical questions mm -hmm. that way. It's just like, you know, you know, where was God in the middle of all this? And mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna say that as a person of faith, I, I really truly believe this. Mm -hmm. I believe God was right there. Yeah. You know, right. uh, yeah, I, I believe that God was right there in the middle of all that. Um, now, did he, do, I, do I think that he caused it? No. Did he certainly allow it to happen? Well, yeah. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, he could have turned the bullets to jelly. He could have done all kinds of things uh, if God is all-powerful. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But he didn't. Mm -hmm. And most of the time he doesn't intervene yeah. in the course of, of you know, uh, physics and, you know, those kinds of right. things. He usually doesn't, you know, we don't usually get those kind of miracles. Right. Okay. Right. But within this context, I believe that you know, in the middle of that, when uh, at least the, uh, I always bring the perspective of suffering to mm -hmm. this, and it's certainly again that's going to be colored by my own Christian perspective mm -hmm. and looking at the life of Jesus. Okay, um, I believe that in some ways we're most like Jesus when we do suffer, mm -hmm. and because of that, anytime we're suffering, uh, we can certainly identify with what he suffered. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, again, one of my more cynical students at one point in time said, yeah, well, Father Joe, you know, Jesus only suffered for three hours, and I've been suffering with this thing for three years. And I just wanted to go, yeah, you'll get, it'll be okay, all right? <laughs> but uh, in terms of that, um, we, we do, we, we, do have a, we do have an opportunity to identify with Christ, I mm -hmm. think, when we suffer. Um, and that suffering, I think, um, you know, we never go looking for it. I think we yeah, go looking yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah. That makes us a little twisted and sick ourselves. But what is our response as people of faith when it happens to mm -hmm. us? Yeah. And when it happens to us, you know, again, I, uh, even Jesus from the human part of him, obviously, you know, what was his point of saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mm -hmm. I mean, he could have been having just exactly those feelings mm -hmm. that God had somehow abandoned him and he wasn't there. But I think in the end result, um, you know, I think if he, you know, trusted that, he knew that God was with him, even mm -hmm. though it didn't feel like it at a particular moment in time. Mm -hmm. I think we, I think our suffering always gives us at least a context, uh, and certainly the, from a Christian perspective, to, to place our suffering, mm -hmm. to place our, a context in which to place our suffering, to where it's no, you know, we at least can make some sense out of that part of the human experience, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Uh, no. We may not like it, but, but we can make some sense out of it in terms of that. Because none of us are going to get out of here without suffering. None of us are going to get out of here without dying. Mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily mean God's absent from it, but it means that God was probably there in a way that we wish the cup could have passed us by. Mm -hmm. Right. But, I, I mean, that's, a, the, uh, that's the prayer Jesus prayed. You know, take this from me. I mean, he, he was staring the crucifixion down and knowing what was going to happen. And he asked, he said, you know, Father, take this from me. If there's another way, yeah. please let there be another way. And I don't think he'd pray that prayer if it weren't possible that there could have been another way. But even Jesus had his prayer go unanswered. Right. And, and, and he suffered. And, um, and yet God, and in and, and one of the Gospels, uh, I think Luke, we're told that angels came to, to attend Mr. to Trump, him. Right. And, and that he you know, was so anxious that he sweat drops of blood. And, and yet, he still had to go to the cross, but he did it willingly. You know, mm -hmm. when he wasn't forced to do it, and his ultimate prayer was, "God, your will be done, not mine." Right. Um, but you know, suffering happens for a lot of different reasons, and I, I think if somebody's, you know, if we're looking at violence and, and the result of, of suffering from violence, um, I think it comes back to this: the understanding that people have free will. Mm -hmm. you know, we, that that as much as God has instructed humankind and given us uh, opportunity to know what is right and what is wrong, even just by looking at nature, uh, we're told in, in scripture, we get an idea of what's right and wrong, that uh, we still have a free choice. You know, we can do good, we can do evil, we can um, um, uh, promote peace, we can uh, promote violence. Yeah, and I think that has to be the, the you know, that kind of the, the thing we all reach for, that thing we stretch for, mm -hmm. is to say, how can I get to a point where even though I want to return violence with violence mm -hmm. sometimes, yeah. how do I dig down a little bit deeper and stop that cycle? Because again, so many times that's what occurs. Somebody hurts somebody else and so now they've learned how to hurt and mm -hmm. now they're gonna, they want somebody else to hurt the same way they were hurting. Yeah, so, so rather that's a good question. Rather than using it as to, to how, heal. How do you move into a place where you're promoting peace rather than promoting, that that's your reaction rather than a violent reaction? Remember, well, what does it take? What are the practices that, ah. Well, I, you know, uh, several years ago, I, uh, you remember when uh, somebody went in, into the Amish community mm -hmm. oh, I and, did, yeah. you know, and visited, I will never forget 
looking at the Talking reaction of the school the children. The school children. Killed, and these yeah. are innocent kids mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, again, some person who was a little unhinged or unbalanced went in and decided he was going to shoot these school children. Mm -hmm. And when that occurred, um, it was very important that the Amish people come the next day to talk to uh, that person's family, mm -hmm. you know, and to show up at that person, because the shooter was killed, obviously. Yeah. But a lot of the Amish community came and they appeared at that funeral and everybody's like, oh my gosh, what are they doing here? What are they, what, what's going to be the reaction? How is this mm -hmm. all going to work out? And I'll never forget watching that, but I mean, uh, those people came and they said, well, it was very important for us to come in to say that we forgive him. Yeah and that we don't hold any of this against you and we want to be with you in your suffering and your right. pain as well mm -hmm. because we can we can resonate with that because of our own suffering and pain mm -hmm. and, and 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 we just are here to reach out in goodwill yeah. so part of the practice to answer your question is forgiveness is, is forgiveness. forgiveness yet we got to learn how to let go of this stuff mm -hmm. now that's not going to be my first message to somebody who's just lost right. somebody they love to some, something violent or something because, I mean, that, that would be a little pastorally insensitive to just say, yeah. oh, you need to get over that right away. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've got to give everybody their opportunity yeah. to go through the full range of what they're feeling and, you know, and let them feel the anger and let them feel all this stuff at first. But, but in any situation like this, when people hang on to the anger, mm -hmm. It's never eats gonna help, it yeah, eats them alive. Absolutely. The only way to get beyond it is to forgive and to let go of those yeah. things. And so in terms of doing that, in those moments, we model that forgiveness by being forgiving. We yeah. model that forgiveness by sharing those stories about how when we let go of something, mm -hmm. you know, that it made it possible for us to move forward yep. in a way that was good. But are there, are there practices that you, that you think are important to getting even to that point where you can let go. Um, are, that, are those some of the basic practices uh, on a daily basis of, of looking for ways to mend fences rather mm -hmm. than, you know, it, before there's a violent act that, that requires us to understand it, you know, that we're working to, in the little situations of life to say, okay, I'm gonna look to be a peacemaker here. Mm -hmm. Um, right. I, I'm going to look to be someone who forgives here. Um, I'm going to practice, have practices of peace, inner peace. You know, maybe that's times of meditation, uh, times of reflection, times of, of uh, moving through scripture, whatever that might be. I, you know, what, what suggestions would you have for somebody? Well, how, how do we become people of peace? Well, I mean, I Is think... Is just a choice? Sure. Well, no, I think you're right about the fact that there are practices. But I mean, that's the point of spiritual practices in the first place. Mm -hmm. We don't, you know, if we if we had it all together and didn't mm -hmm. need to practice anything, that's why I keep, I always say to Catholics, it's just like, that's what we call it, practicing our faith. We <laughs> never really actually get it right. Get it right, keep practicing. We just keep practicing because we <laughs> hope we're going to do a little bit better yeah. next week than we did it last week, yeah. all right? So I think you're on to that when you yeah. start listing those, those practices, right. like prayer and meditation, forgiveness, and those things. For us, one of the big things for us as Catholics is, the, is again, the communal worship. Right. We come together... And we don't just mm -hmm. sit and do it. Our, I mean, of course, there's always that individual component right, of the meditating, worship, I think, yeah. but we do it together so that we can be molded and formed, not yeah. just individually, but as a people. Right. And so sometimes we nudge each other. It's, yeah. in the, it's in the nudging of each other yeah. in terms of those things yeah, and I think that that's the formation occurs. In, in, a, in a small group setting, not only a, a larger corporate worship setting, but in a small group setting mm -hmm. where you're actually in each other's lives and right. holding each other accountable to yeah. say, you know, uh, or open up yourself and say, you know, I, I did some things I'm not proud of. I, I, I let my anger get the best of me. I, yeah. I did some things that, that I regret. And then a, a small community around you can say, okay, let's, let's practice forgiveness for you. You practice forgiveness for yourself. Then let's hold each other accountable about this in the future. Or even in a family setting. Mm -hmm. I think it is so phenomenal. I've, I've seen couples do this where if, you know, husband and wife have gotten into it, even in front of their kids, especially if they got into it in front of their kids, mm -hmm. they'll also do the reconciliation in front of in their front kids of kids as well. Yeah, that makes because sense. Because they're just they're saying, you know, your mom and I had a fight the other day and I need to tell your mom I'm sorry for, you know, the way I was acting. And so, um, I just want to do that now, since you guys model, got to hear. Since you guys got to hear us fight, I want to also hear. I also want you to hear us as we try to make mm -hmm. this right and to, and to fix it. Uh, I think those are phenomenally powerful mm -hmm. examples for yeah. kids uh, in a in a family church yeah. setting. You know, to practice, do that. Practice. So be people that practice peaceful activities. Mm -hmm. 
practice forgiveness. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, sometimes I'm, I've done this with, uh, you know, sometimes my youth group or college students or whatever. So it's just like, I want you to imagine the, the person that you're having the biggest trouble with right now. Mm -hmm. Just bring that person to mind and feel all those things that you're feeling about that person. Think about some person who's gone after you or think about that person who, um, you know, who's just out to, who's been working on you all week long, ready to get you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then, just think about that person. I just want to get you got the face. You see the person. Say, now, what I want you to do. I just, is I just see your face, you to, Jay. I'm sorry. Right, I'm Go sorry. ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, yeah. You know, close your eyes. It'll get better. It'll get there. That's much better. Um, but I mean, when you do that, you, you bring that person to mind. And then what I say is, now can you start praying for that person? Mm -hmm. Can you start asking God to love that person? Can you start asking God to help you to love that person? Mm -hmm. Can you do some of those things? One of my favorite quotes is from uh, St. Bonaventure, who was actually a teacher of St. Francis of Assisi. He always just said, the measure of my love for God is the person I love the least. Mm -hmm. Which That's kind of like smacks stuff. you right yeah. in the face. Yeah. Um, so we've been here this morning talking about uh, violence and how we respond as people of faith to violence. Um, we're going to be right back after this Mercy Minute. Uh, I've been here with Aaron Brown from St. Paul's United Methodist. So thanks for joining me again this morning, Aaron. It's always good to be And here. again, we'll be right, right back after uh, this word from Mercy. I think it's important to see the plastic surgeon beforehand so that way you know what the options are in terms of reconstruction whether it's one breast or both breasts or whether if they opt for what's called conservative therapy if you have a lumpectomy um, and radiation what are your options after that so I think it just empowers women to have more information to decide what's the best decision for them moving forward. And some of the pluses about immediate reconstruction are that you, for the most part, have one less surgery. Uh, and also, psychologically, a lot of women just love knowing that they've already started the healing process. So thanks for joining us this morning for Faith in Our Hometown. Uh, our conversation this morning is about how do we respond as people of faith or even people of a, of a larger community to events of violence because unfortunately we live in a very violent world. Uh, we live in a world where people pick up guns and shoot each other because they don't like some aspect of them. Sometimes they do it from religious perspectives, sometimes they do it from perspectives of, of trying to rid the world of some type of person, fill in the blank however you want, whatever adjective you'd like to use. I don't like this type of person, so now because of that I can feel justified in getting rid of them or wiping them out. Unfortunately, these things are way too common in our experience. Um, uh, we've been spared a lot of that here in our own area, but, but it, unfortunately it happens way too often. How do we respond as people of faith? Uh, well, if we're going to be people of peace, we're going to have to learn how to practice peace. We're going to have to, have to practice it toward each other. We're going to have to learn how to forgive and let go of it. When we're hurt, we can't hang on to the hurt. We've got to turn around and do it a different way. We just got to learn how to break the cycle of violence and, and be people of peace. And if we're going to do that, that's faith in our hometown. Join us again. Thanks for watching. Faith in our hometown can be seen Sunday mornings at 6.30 and 9 a.m. on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.